Happy Monday. Hi guys. We're gonna go ahead and get started today. We have an exciting launch that is happening in the next couple of days. And we wanna go ahead and give you guys a heads up and walk you through it today so that you could get prepared for it, get used to it and kind of understand your options and what we have available to you from an e-prescribe perspective. So um, it's gonna be, we hope a very fun one with a lot of information. So if you don't catch it all today with this, you'll see it inside of your AR portal very soon. And then of course you can always do the replay on YouTube at any point after the session. So I'm going to, give me just one second here and I'm going to get us going. I'm having a bit of a, a technical difficulty, which is not unusual for me, but I think we're gonna be good to go. Okay, can we see it? Yep, I can see your presentation. Awesome. We're okay. on cloud-based e-prescribing. Yes. All righty. So we're going to run through today just a little bit on um, cloud-based e-prescribing, what it is, what your options are, whoa, and what you can expect as we go forward. So like I told you guys, I'm having difficulties this morning. <laughs> so we are launching this in an effort to help with the current e-prescribe system. So if you guys think about right now, we have the system where you can either e-fax or email something to a pharmacy. It's kind of caught sort of in la-la land and you never really hear back. So what we're aiming to fix today is to take the current state of the prescribing method we have in the system right now and change it where it works as a true e-prescribe. So we're moving from this sort of uh, manual process, if you wanna call it that, into what will now be this universal 99% of all pharmacies involved sort of information highway. So we're gonna add a lot of features to it. And it's gonna work off of the SureScripts network, which is the network that connects all pharmacies in America. This is US based only for now, um, but you'll be able to do a lot more than you can do in the current situation. So some things including like preparing a prescription for your provider and putting it in the queue, talking to the pharmacy direct, uh, directly. So a lot of things that we can hopefully fix that you've maybe struggled with um, recently that we can get fixed for you. So. And Victoria, feel free to jump in at any point. If you want to say anything, just take over. I sure will. We're going to go through today three different types of subscriptions that we have. The first is your what we call EPCS, which is your electronically prescribed controlled substances, so your scheduled substances. Then we also have a version where you don't do controlled. You just do your traditional prescription services. And then lastly, your support users. And that includes both your admin user, who is going to sort of manage your account in AR, but also those, maybe an RN, LPN, whomever, who's preparing the prescriptions for the prescriber in the queue, they're just going to go in and hit the button and go. So we're going to show you all three today, how the situation sort of um, all comes together once you enroll people and how you kind of connect the dots. And then also go into the SureScripts network, into the actual program that we're using, the third, the third party platform, and show you how to prescribe things, how it connects back to AR, and really the way that the whole process, the workflow um, like sort of emerges for you. But I think a few things I wanted to highlight that are really neat about the system is it is a true integration with our system directly. So um, if you guys are familiar at all with pharmacy, you can't really build your own e-prescribe system. It doesn't work that way. You have to use a vendor who is on the sure, on the SureScripts network who's certified. So they're all third-party integrations. So we have obviously this integration, but it works directly from your patient chart in AR. So when you're inside your AR platform, We'll go directly out to your uh, uh, prescription portal without really feeling any difference and you'll come back in as well so it's a very seamless workflow there's also some quick prescribe options so if you use our pos now you know about the quick pay option there's a quick prescribe option as well we have a, sort of like a pre-populated list of the of the most traditional uh, dosages for medication so if you're going to prescribe something it's going to show you that, you know like maybe top 10 ways it's typically prescribed so it's a nice workflow efficiency method also, full drug database, interaction tracking, a nice little favorites option too, which is good if you're prescribing a lot of the same kinds of things, like let's say lip injections, Valtrex, a lot of the same kinds of medications, you can do a whole favorites list. So this makes it a little faster for you. We can also do custom compounding. So if you're doing your own topical, which in many states you have to do, you can do your own custom compounding method. You also have insurance verification with PBM, so you can look at pre-authorizations and co-pays. Again, communication with the pharmacy directly, which is a big one for us because you never hear that error message to like call you and tell you. And then we're gonna walk you through the ID me secure tokenization process, which it really protects you as a prescriber if you're doing controlled for sure. But just in general, we're gonna verify your identity as you come in as a prescriber into the system and sign up. And then lastly, we store all the documents for you inside of AR. So if you write a prescription 
in this portal. It'll be saved to your AR platform as well, so you can see it everywhere you go. So it's kind of some of the big highlights. We'll go through a little bit more as we go into the actual portal, but that's kind of the, the big wins for us right now. So Victoria, anything you want to add on that before we go to our pricing model? Not too much. I think you kind of, you know, hit each part of it, but I think, you know, as you guys look at the way things work today versus what they will look like, I think you'll all be very, very, you know, excited to see all of the positive changes that we've made. Um, it really is a seamless flow from start to finish. So we'll take everyone through it, but very seamless. And then as you look at any previous, you know, historical data or medical history with your patient, you're easily able to see all of that in the patient's profile. So that just makes it easier, you know, for futuristic prescribing and things like that, that you have it all truly in one place. So a full timeline. Yeah. And I think the drug interaction tracking is huge because obviously right now, if you're using our paper format inside the system, there is no drug interaction tracking. This is a really beneficial tool if you're you know, prescribed multiple things, you want to know if there's any kind of allergy issues. And I think the full drug database as well, just from a perspective of knowing what you're prescribing, you have the whole like diagnosis codes in there. So there's a lot of benefits as like a you know true medical benefits, you know, practitioner wise, beyond just the work efficiency that we're going to give you. Um, and I think our pricing model is, is extraordinarily low cost, <laughs> maybe, maybe too low cost <laughs> for all the work this has taken. Uh, but we're going to walk you through that next and kind of show you the different options that you have. So I don't know if you guys have shopped around much for e-prescribed providers, but it's quite a pricey process. As we were looking for providers for you, I, I don't know, I probably interviewed 10 different, different groups to try to find the perfect fit for our company. And the pricing was so incredibly high that I just felt like our users would never want to pay that kind of money. I mean, it would be like triple their AR, you know, sometimes six, seven times their AR subscription. And so that's just, that's just too much. Like we're not going to do that. So we worked diligently to find a prescriber partner who would have a very low cost option for you that we felt was a good price point that wouldn't break the bank or make you feel like you were sort of a, a hostage to paying for your e-prescribe. So I'm going to walk you through the different options. And as you see these, just remember we have two different types here, right? We have EPCS, which means I'm doing controlled. Then I have my non-EPCS and my non-controlled. And then within that setup, we have two different choices. So we have either a six month or a one year. And so as we look at the provider, part of the benefit of the, of the cheaper uh, or more value priced option is we're doing a longer term commitment. So not a month to month with them, <clears throat> but a six month or one year. So if you're doing the controlled substances, our six month option is $45 per month. And then our one year is 40 per month. And so again, if you've been shopping around for e-prescribe options, you'll notice that that's far below anything in the market. So hopefully it's a good price point for you, but it's 45 or 40. As you come on to these commitments, you do have to pay for the ID token. So again, with EPCS, you have to verify you know, if you're prescribing Adderall, for instance, or really any sort of um, you know, pain, pain drug or anything like that, you're gonna have to have an ID me process to verify that you are the prescriber. So we're gonna walk you through that today. I'll show you how that works on a, on a little token, but there is a fee for that annually, which is just to verify your identity again, part of the process. And then with each one of these, you get five free support agents. So if you have in your office, 10 prescribers, then you get 50 support agents. So it's a five person multiplier. So if you have three, you have 15. So all of your support agents come at no cost to you. So you're just paying for your prescribers. So this is your EPCS version. So again, it's going to be your 25 a year regardless, but you're either 45 for the six month or 40 for the one year. And then if you're doing the six months um, for the non EPCS, you're at 35 and for, EP, or for the one year it's 31, it's a little bit cheaper there. But again, the same token is required. So you have to actually set up your identity in the beginning, no matter which one you choose, you still have to actually do the, the ID process each time if you're doing the non-EPCS. So again, same thing on five users, you get five free users per prescriber. So same kind of option here, it's just a little bit less expensive because you don't require a DEA number and there's not the whole like ID process for with each prescription. So again, you have two choices, EPCS, non-EPCS, six months and one year for both. So hopefully Victoria, I covered that and it made sense with our little hand dandy charts here, which one's which. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, if you guys have questions, you have the Q&A box or you can chat yeah. us and we'll happily answer anything. Yeah, send us a Q&A. So you're going to enroll to the system, obviously. And as you enroll, we'll show you that in just a second. You'll see how this works. Um, and you can certainly change your prescription if you need, or your sub, not prescriptions, your subscriptions. I'm getting confused if you need to at any point. But if you use a DEA number, then you're going to get the EPCS. 
You can also inactivate users as they, you know, someone gets let go from the clinic and you wanna make sure that they're cut off from anything within your clinic. Uh, you can inactivate people, you can activate people. So there, it's pretty flexible to what you can do with it. So I think here, let me see what is next. So again, we're gonna go through the IDME process, but this is um, an easier way then you know, we've seen someone have to call in and give like a code over the phone or type something in. This is a very simple on your iPhone, little like a, almost one of those um, generator, like the Google app generator apps where you just say, yep, it's me, done. So we'll go through that with you. Um, it's easy to install, it takes up no, no memory on your phone. It's also obviously certified for all the HIPAA things, all the safety things, but it's also interoperable. So if you sign up for this with our system, if you go to anywhere else that uses IDME, it's the same thing everywhere. So you pay the token fee once per year. And if you have IDME on 10 different things, let's say you work at the hospital as well, it works everywhere. One fee, you're good to go. Again, fully integrated, the 25 fee is included in that price that you already saw. So if you guys think about this price here, like the 397, it's already included in that, nothing extra. So it's a pretty easy, pretty easy process. Yeah. And then we'll transition. Wrote, go ahead. I was yeah. just gonna, well, actually our next slide might sort of be getting into this, but we had a quick Q and A. Sure. So the question is, would the prescriber need to be an admin and AR, or could we assign the role to a non-admin account? That is an excellent question. So as you come into your AR enrollment, which we'll, you'll see in a second, I recommend strongly that you put an admin as your like um, e-prescribe admin, the person who signs up first, like a support user. Could that be a prescriber? 100%. But it could also be, in our case, it could be Victoria and I. So let's say that Dr. Harper is our doctor. He can be the prescriber or the support agents. We can be the ones to set the account up, to prepare everything for the account, to enroll all our all of our prescribers. But there is no need to have like any sort of role in AR. We'll dictate how you sign up for you prescribe. They're totally separate functions, which will make sense in a second why it's important, but they're totally separate functions, but you can be like a physician owner of the account, the only person who works there. You're both the admin and the prescriber, totally fine. It doesn't matter. But what you have to know is that you have to have at least one support agent per account. And here's why. So let's say in this scenario where I am the provider, I own a clinic, I'm a solo doctor. I do my own charting, my own checkout, I'm a one man show. <clears throat> in order for you to complete your enrollment, there must be another human who verifies that you are also a human, <laughs> that you are who you say you are. There has to be an external person outside of you who basically verifies the account is like a real practice and verifies that you're a real human. It's a one click thing. It's nothing intrusive. It's not an affidavit, but that has to be a person who is not the prescriber. So if you have another person in your AR account, let's say it's a front desk person, a, a patient consultant, it's easy, right? You go ahead and just add them in as a user because they're already in AR. It's already kind of defaulted on the screen. Good to go. But let's say for me, I don't have that person. You're, you have to put somebody in, so you're able to put in an, an external support user, which means my friend Victoria, let's say she's my sister, I say, hey, Victoria, can you be the person who vouches for me? I'm going to send you a link for my e-prescribe portal as an external user. Can you just go in and verify my identity, and then you're done? So she just does that once, and she's finished. She doesn't ever come back in again, but you have to have at least one person. So if you have people in your practice who are support users, this is easy peasy. If you don't, you're gonna see an external support option to invite someone. It can be a wife, a husband, a, anyone who's of legal age can do this for you. Uh, they just, they're not part of AR. They're not gonna be in your AR system at all, not gonna see patient charts, nothing like that. They're just gonna be in, this, in the e-prescribe portal to verify who you are. They won't see anything beyond that. That's their only role, basically. Does that make sense, Victoria? Did I answer the question okay? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Do we have any questions from the group on that? And you'll see when we go to sign up, how to choose between if you're going to be the prescriber admin or the support agent admin, because you have two different options there. So we're going to walk through this right now on AR, but you have kind of a process and it's not that it's a, a process per se, but you have to do some things in order, they won't work. So you're going to go to your settings tab, which we'll see in a second, and you're going to enroll the practice. This is one thing that you must know if you walk away with nothing but this, remember this, the first enroller has to complete sign up from start to finish for the practice to be established. So let's say again, in the case where I'm the physician at my clinic and I'm the admin, if I go to enroll my practice in ePrescribe, I must go through from start to finish from the enrollment email that says, hey, congratulations, you've been invited to enroll. And I enroll myself in it. 
all the way through to the success screen. Once I've hit the success screen, I can start to invite other prescribers, other support agents, everyone else. But that first person has to go all the way through the process to establish the practice inside of the pharmaceutical network, if you will. So inside of our, our e-prescribed third-party platform. So we have to have that done. And then once that's completed, you'll see where it, it sort of turns off the enrollment screen and turns on the add user screen. You can do all the things you want to do. So it's going to kind of... Um, not, not kind of throttle it for you, if you will. So if you've not done this, <clears throat> you'll see that you can't do anything else, but you may not know why, and that's why. So just so you know, you have to get them all the way through the process in order for it to actually work for you to enroll other people. So hopefully that is understandable. Okay, so let's see here. We want to see these features in action. Are you ready to go, Victoria? Ready to see it in action? Ready. Well, I'm going to stop my share for one second and pull open our portal and do some signing up. So give me just one minute here. In the meantime, if we have any questions, feel free to put those out. Okay. Let me go back to my Zoom. And I'm going to get us a share. So I'm logging in as somebody who has never enrolled my practice before. So I'm just logging in as like, a general user, anyone, any user. But in order to see this, you're gonna to have, to have some kind of administrative rights to obviously see the integration button. So if you're in your normal AR, you know, AR portal to enroll in ePrescribe, here's sort of your workflow of steps. You're gonna to go to your settings tab first, like you would for any other integration. You're going to scroll down to the very bottom where it says ePrescribing, click on that, and you're only going to see the option here to enroll. So Confirm this in your mind, it says enroll. It doesn't say add users, it says enroll. So click that. And then at the point I made earlier to Victoria's question that was asked, we're going to say, am I a prescriber and an account admin or I'm just an account admin only? Because the links are going to be different. Signing up me as the doctor is going to look different than signing up Victoria as my support user. So we have to differentiate at this point, which one of the, what, what kind of user are we starting with to enroll the practice? And again, this is the person who has to go all the way through for this to work. So if it's someone who's like not accessible for the next two weeks when they're on vacation, don't put them in first because until they do their job, no one can get in. So I would encourage you that if you know that your doc is gonna be busy for three days, he or she's in surgery, can't get it done, do it as the account admin, get the practice enrolled, and then you can send them an, you know, an invite at any point to enroll them, an, you know, an NP, a PA, whoever else, they're not waiting on someone to finish all the IDB process. So I had a question pop up. Yeah, we do. Yes, in Puerto Rico, yes, you're still, I'm almost positive Puerto Rico still works because you're still like US based. Part of the US, I'll double yeah. check that. I don't think it's like the lower 48. I think it's that plus Puerto Rico, but I will double check. Okay, so we're going to sign up as if we are a prescriber. So I'm going to go ahead and start my enrollment and continue. So here's where you get your options. So do you want to enroll in EPCS? or non-EPCS. And I'm going to, for our purposes today, enroll in EPCS because I wanna prescribe controlled substances. So keep going. You're going to come here to your first menu and this can be changed. I might enroll myself in one year because I own the practice. I'm gonna be here clearly because I own it and I'm going to be taking advantage of the discounted rate. However, I have a brand new doc or brand new nurse. I'm not sure she's gonna stay or not. We'll see what happens. I may put her in a six month plan. So I may not want to put everyone in the one year and I may not put them all in EPCS and we're going to be non, so we're going to be EPCS. But again, you've got four different quadrants here. You've got your six month or one year, EPCS, non-EPCS. You can mix and match your tiles, however you want to mix and match them. There is no requirement. So I'm going to put in for me today, a one year commitment. And then in this case, I am a noop. So I'm going to put in a noop. So it's only going to give you this drop down your provider. So if someone's not listed as a provider in your practice, like work as a provider, they won't show up here. So they've got to be as a provider in the practice under that little click. So you see here my email. And then the NPI and DEA that you put in here does not quite translate over to SureScripts, to our network that we're coming on. So you have Scripture and SureScripts. But this is for us to make sure that you have both of these numbers to push you over into that invite the correct way. So it's like, wait a minute, I don't have a DEA number. Then we know you can't do this kind of a prescription um, so a prescription subscription. You're going to have to have a DEA number to get EPCS. But for my purposes, we're going to pretend that I have one clearly. 
I'm putting in random numbers here, just going, da, 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 da. these are not correct license numbers. If this is your license number, I'm very sorry. I'm just make it up as I go. So once I hit confirm enrollment, which our test account has had some craziness this morning, you see a success message, which is basically telling you, hey, this came to you, you're good to go and enroll. So Victoria has the actual email enrollment in her email account that shows how to get this done. So we're gonna switch over to her screen to show you how the login email comes to you and then also what it looks like going forward. So go for it, sister. All right, can you see the email? I sure can. Perfect. All right, so if Tiffany were to invite me, this is essentially what I would be getting as the user. Um, so you'll notice it's basically just the invitation. It gives us some specific information. Um, keep in mind your business logo or your practice logo will be listed up here. And then your business information is all inserted down below here. So what I will do now is click set up my account. So let me pull up a web browser. Maybe. One second here. Okay, so emails going on. So, <laughs> all right, you can see this now, right? Yes, you can. All and right, Victoria, perfect. by the way, is invited as a non EPCS user. So that's why you see MPI only. She's a non EPCS kid for this purpose. I don't get all the fun stuff. <laughs> can't, you can't be trusted. <laughs> okay, so you guys will see I'm just agreeing to the terms of service, filling out the recaptcha. We'll hit next. And then we will just enter in. And then this one, I'm going to use this email. All right. So you guys can see these screens are pretty intuitive. Nothing too difficult to understand. Okay, so what I would then do at this point is fill out any additional information. And then Tiffany, you can uh, correct me here, but if we did non EPCS, does this DEA still show, do you know? It or shows, but it's not required. So here's okay. the thing do. In Victoria's screen, the required asterisk is because I've enrolled her as an EPCS non-user. Non, you know, non if I subscribe her as both, to do the EPCS, she has to put both in as requirement. Here's where you get into trouble. If a person has an EA number and puts it in here, it will kick them over into EPCS because it's it. The system is saying, wait a minute. If you want to send controlled substances, you put the EA number in. We think your admin made a mistake, and you you want that EPCS subscription version. So, if you don't want them to send control, then they need to only use here the NPI number and not the not the EPCS, you know, the EA number at all. We had a question that came through about medical directors. As long as the person is not a front desk user or an admin user, if they have any sort of rights um, to sign to sign charts to be, you know, like a provider, they will be able to be enrolled in in SureScripts. So yes, medical directors who are not a true provider would have access to enroll absolutely. Perfect. So I should have okay. clarified that on it's a prescriber, it's a provider or a medical director. I should have been more clear. My apologies. Mm -hmm. All right, so we will go ahead and finish up. Uh, we'll skip that. We'll agree to all. And if good, this is a good moment here. If you, if you decline to agree to any of the EULA, the end user licensing agreement, or your DEA is blocked, or it has a hold on it, or anything like that that we don't control, then it's up to the SureScripts network and the Scripture company to decline you as a user. So you may pay for a year, but if for some reason they get, they kick you back out to say, hey, your DEA is on hold, we can't we can't give you this, then we'll obviously refund you back the money clearly. Uh, but there's a you know we we don't control that right. We don't control the DEA, your state licensing board, and all that stuff. So we're still at the mercy of your license status to give you access to this. So just be cognizant of that if something is kind of wonky on your license right now that I can't fix that for you. It's gonna to have to be a, a refund until we get it fixed. Mm -hmm. We had another quick question here. So will the controlled prescriptions work in Kentucky? So the answer to that is yes, as long as you're located in the United States, 
um, you will have access. And obviously to Tiffany's point, as long as your credentials are valid, um, that's kind of the dictating factor as far as your DEA number, et cetera, um, to kind of make that happen. So, and if, so if you're in Texas, for instance, I think what, maybe what you're asking is in Texas, you have to go to the Texas state database and verify that the person is not abusing the prescription, right? Like, let's say it's Adderall. You have to go into the Texas state thing and like the portal and agree that, you know, Victoria Adrian has not had Adderall in the past 15 days. She's not been a drug seeker, all that stuff. So that is a separate function than e-prescribe. So I don't know about Kentucky law, you know, specifically, but in Texas, at least, there is like a separate portal for, for controlled substances, but then you must also go and actually prescribe it. So once I've signed off on it, that I'm going to prescribe it, you have to actually prescribe it as well. So it's like a double whammy. Um, so maybe like that in Kentucky where, you know, any of those like additional state layers from the pharmacy board, medical board, this does not circumvent that. This is just the e-prescribe part of it. So even if you have to do that, you have to still actually prescribe the drug somewhere. So this is where you actually prescribe the drug. So on ID me, I'm going to, to kind of take you through quickly. We're going to send to you, if you enroll in this, a guide for ID me, but you basically are going in and you are, it's almost like when you get a credit card, um, you have to put like your mom's maiden name is where you went to high school. You know, they're going to give you all these, all these choices. Did you live on any of these streets in the past 50 years? All that like random wacky stuff. That's what tells them that you are who you say you are. So they're going to give you a series of questions. You'll have to upload your ID, either an ID or a passport. Um, because again, it's controlled substances, is kind of a big deal, opioids, everything else. So they want to make sure that you are who you say you are. But they're going to go through a pretty big series of questions. I think it's like 10 or so questions. So if you are the person who is not the prescriber, you probably can't pass a test. Uh, I wouldn't know Victoria's prior address when she was 12, unless I text her and she's in the OR operating, I'm not going to know. So the person who does the ID verification needs to be the person who is the prescriber. They're going to do a screenshot of the face of like the whole thing. It has to be that person. It cannot be an, an admin doing it for you. But you're going to go through a series of questions, upload a documented ID. And then once you've done that, you're finished. It's, you know, you're done. It shouldn't take you more than five minutes. Don't get me wrong. It's not like some long process. But if you don't know any of the information, like what kind of car did you buy last year? Do you have a loan at this bank? It's going to require, again, that person to actually do it. But we've already signed me up. I'm already done. So we're going to sign into my account. And I think we already gave you my password, correct, earlier today? You did, yep. So I think we're going to have to go to or sign into your account right, right above oh, that. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. right. And so once Victoria does that, I get a signing request on my end. And let me see if I can share that really quickly. Give me one minute here. Well, let me. I'm going to do it so you guys can see it. And while you're getting that loaded, we have another question. So the question is what if I already have an IDME account? Then you just log in, just like what I just did. Easy peasy. For some reason, I cannot get my, there we go. Okay, so if you already have it, if you guys can see that. So as soon as I logged in, if you already have an account, <clears throat> again, interoperable, if you already have an account, you're just gonna click yes, and I'm in. So it's the exact same process for prescribing. If I try to prescribe Adderall, I just noticed because we've, we've been using that as our test because it's controlled like every state. If you prescribe Adderall, you get the exact same message where you get the, is this you or not you, yes or no. And if you guys can see on my phone, let me go to the actual app. Got a lot of stuff on here. <laughs> it is making you drunk yet, probably. Um, well, I don't think it's that one, but it looks just like, actually it is that one. So that's all it is. The app only has the notifications, nothing else. Like it's just, does that. Now there's an option to put face ID on it. I just have the yes or no, because it's easier for me right now, but. Um, it's a pretty easy, pretty easy thing to do. So I'm going to stop my share from here. And do we have any more questions on any of that before we go into the actual system and look at prescribing? Okay, well, I'm going to go back to the desktop on my end. And I'm going to show you guys the account after Victoria did all of that and she verified her identity and she signed us up with the practice. We're good to go. Then we're going to go ahead and move forward. So you can see my AR account, Victoria? Yeah, looks okay, good. So now we're getting back in our account where we've verified all the people and we're, we're e-prescribing like crazy. 
Once you've done all that, when you go to your e-prescribe button here, you now see instead the option to add people. So before we had the enroll button, now we have this button. So under prescribers, you're going to see your active prescribers. So we see Jazlene here, who's Victoria. She doesn't like a Jazlene. We have Jazlene on here. We have um, me, I'm, I'm your admin on this account and a couple other people here too. So these are our active providers. Now let's say that we fire somebody, we fire Raju, he's out of here. We're gonna go in and, and, and activate him, which cuts him off from scripture altogether either from our system or even if he were able to find an independent login and get in, he couldn't get in. We're going to totally cut him off. We also have our inactives. So I've already cut a few people off here who are no good. And then our in progress. If you've sent them an invitation, they have not responded back, you see it here. So you can keep resending the, the email if you need to to get them to actually sign up. You also just click either here or here to add an EPCS or on EPCS. If I want to add my EPCS, the exact same screens again that you've already walked through, march down the path. Nothing exciting there. But let's say that I am that prescriber. I'm Dr. Tiffany, who is a lone wolf out here with no, no support staff. I can add my support user through the support users button here. So I have some options. I can add my support agent. And if I work alone and there's no one in my account, just me, I'm all alone. I can click on add external support agent and put in you know, Victoria Adrian. She's my sister. And her address is, you know, tessaar.com. So once I do that, she gets an external email. You know, this is like, hey, person, come be our user. But again, I, we have a note here. Please note that they don't have access to any AR records. This is just for the portal and the, the network you just saw, the actual platform to verify identity. So confirm enrollment. Done. She'll get the invitation for the email. She'll go in and she'll verify herself. Now, the other option is to add your actual real support users. So your ad support agent here, they're all listed right here. So if they're in the system as someone, really as anyone in the system, um, they can be listed here as a support agent. And then once you get inside the enrollment, so if I add, let's say right now, Pavin, once I confirm Pavin's enrollment and get into the application, I can choose which physicians, NPs or PAs he can prescribe for. So you'll do all the like rights and privileges in the actual prescription platform. So you won't do it here. We don't care who, who Pavin can prescribe for here because it doesn't matter. We're not the ones who make that call. When you get into the actual where Victoria just was located when she was filling it out, that's where you'll say Pavin can prescribe for Tiffany, for Joe, for Sally, and for Kim. Done. And then we'll do all that inside of that particular, um, that, those screens. So that's how you get them signed up. And then if you are the admin, you can go to the admin portal directly at any point and log in right there. It'll pop, pop up a login screen for you. So if you're the admin user, you want to be able to have your login somewhere handy to know what that login is. It's the only one that doesn't authenticate all the way in. The support users have to go in and put an actual login in because it's not tied to a patient chart. It's a different part of the system. So it's kind of blocked off. We're going to forget about that for now and go back to here. And I'm going to take you quickly through the ePrescribe and the portal, like ours, our version of the dashboard. And then Victoria's going to show you how to do it on the actual app. So I'm going to go quick here, so don't waste any time. We're going to use Anastasia Parker as our, our favorite patient. So you have two options. You can do a quick prescribe here with this button or an actual procedure. So we're going to go to our e-prescribe button. And you'll notice here that we only have one screen. So we know that if they're going to call in a script for like a refill, you need to mark that down somewhere, right? I need to put in here that Victoria needs a refill on something. So I might put in refill for, um, I don't know. She's on Zyrtec. She had implants. She's having some issues. So patient, you know, called for refill at, you know, 8.59 on 2.22. Refill sent um, immediately, whatever, whatever you want to write there. Hit e prescribe button. It's going to kick you out immediately into the portal. So now in the prescriber. So we have an error here because we're using a test account that isn't real. So this patient doesn't have like a real life. She doesn't have a PBM or anything. So this is, you will never see this menu. I'm gonna go ahead and X that out. So I'm going to be able to see for Anastasia and Blair Parker, all the things I've prescribed to her before. So I've prescribed to her Adderall, Valtrex and Zyrtec. I'm just gonna re-prescribe it for her. Hit the re-prescribe -re button. Yep, she's gonna take one by mouth daily, 30 day supply, great, send to pharmacy approve and send, we're good to go. So easy cheesy, right? Like nothing is hard there. 
if I'm doing her Adderall refill, that's where I need me comes in. So it tells me EPCS schedule two, if I send this to pharmacy, you see now it comes up. I'm going to sign in here. I'm going to get my little, my little note here. I just got it, came through. And it's going to tell me to verify my identity. And I'm going to hit yes, that's me. I just clicked my yes. And now all of a sudden I'm approved and I can approve and send. So all that's really quick. Uh, if you're a brand new patient who's coming over, so let's say that I want to go back to AR, I've taken care of Anastasia, she's fine, all good. And I click my X here, I'm back inside of AR. So if I'm doing you know, a cosmetic procedure, just like it always works, if I go through the procedure from start to finish, and on the app, more applicable health, obviously on the desktop, I'll see my e-prescribe button here, I click it, and again, I'm back in the portal again. So your e-prescribe button, instead of taking you to that universal fax form now, takes you to the actual portal. But the one thing I want you guys to see on this end, at least, we'll see on the app too, is if we're trying to prescribe for a patient who does not have a middle name or an address, you're going to get an error. So if I go to, let's see if this one has it. Does she have a birthday? Oh, she does. I, I'm having a hard time finding people who don't have birthdays in the system. But let's just say we have, let's see, maybe this person doesn't have one. Aha, uh -huh, okay, so I'm going to prescribe for this test user. If I go to ePrescribe here, I'm going to get, um, let's see, I'll show you one second. I'm gonna get a note that basically says, you don't have a middle name, a date of birth, an address, city, state, or zip code. And without that, we can't prescribe because you know, the pharmacy needs that. So you're gonna get a pop-up window to add that stuff in. And just as you guys are thinking about what's coming next, we will start to force this information when the patient um, app launches. So when you go in and, and register yourself for the patient app, you'll be asked to put this stuff in as a mandatory field. So it'll come into this system automatically, which means if you're a TouchMD user, the birthday's in here for you. So it's gonna have a, a lot of benefits beyond just this, but you get this note like, hey, it's missing. You can't move forward without getting that done. But as far as prescribing in the system, it's that button that you see here, or it's going into your actual treatment assignment like you normally would. You know, here I did her cold petite. Uh, and hitting e-prescribe and going back in. So just like you normally would, you know, in a, one of them today. And then if you want to see the documents and what gets stored, I'll show you that with Anastasia. Oh, there she is right there. As I prescribe for Anastasia, in my documents, I see here all my refills. And if you were looking at this on the app, you see fun little icons that look like little prescriptions. But as I look at her refill for Zyrtec, the actual e-prescription, I've done a couple today that I'm going to be able to view that and see my document, which I can probably change my share. And you guys can see that little medications, which this one is actually blank and I don't know why, but let me, let me fix that for us. I'm using a different account than normal. Here you go. If you guys can see that, I did yep. this earlier today. We have Zyrtec that I gave her three refills on and I have Adderall but no refills on it. So I have this on her account. So at least if I go and look at her records or her documentation, I have both the prescription, that page you just saw, but also the procedure that notes that she called in and needs something done. So I have here on the um, procedure refill here, I have the actual like, documentation from her procedure export. Sorry about my child just woke up and here we are. Okay. I'm going to stop my share, Victoria, and let you take us through the way it looks on the app. All right, perfect. I will get that queued up. Maybe. There we go. Okay, let me know when you can see the app. We can see it. Perfect. All right, so what we will go ahead and go through first is just, um, we call it our, our quick prescribe button. So if you click your blue icon down here, you will notice you have this cute little icon for your e-prescribing. So if we wanted to go ahead and select that, I can choose a patient at this point, enter his name, put in any notes that are relevant here. And then you'll notice right up at the top, we just have to click e-prescribe. And we'll probably get an error similar to what Tiffany got on the web here, but if we just hit close, I'll go past those screens. 
So what we can do next is we can prescribe the new drugs. So these screens are obviously pretty similar to what you're seeing, you know, when you're on the actual desktop. Um, so we have the option to search, but we'll just choose some of this here, do a little bit of that. And can you go back right. to that screen of quickly, Victoria, that you were just on? Because I didn't really go through the way that the, the platform works. So we'll do some additional training on the actual platform itself, which you'll have ac access to um, in our, like our YouTube page and on our learning yeah. lab too. I yeah. screwed you all up. I'm sorry. I miss, I miss <laughs> you're you. Fine. <laughs> you're fine. Okay. So we'll click close. Okay. We'll start from this. Yeah. So prescribe a new drug and type in, I don't know. Zofran. Yeah, Zofran. In case you're nauseous today. Our, our friend, Zofran. <laughs> so as she selects okay. the drug, it should pull up all the common dosing that you see for most Zofran. So either a four milligram or eight milligram tablet. So it kind of is one of those like work efficiency tools I gave you before. It gives you the milligrams that are typically or tubes or whatever else. And then here you see all the ways people prescribe it as far as like uh, you know, the times per day, et cetera. So we hope that that's a quick, like a work hack for you, but you can also do your own format as well. But, and if you do that, it will save it for you, but there's some workarounds here that are nice because it's already sort of pre-programmed based on the most commonly prescribed formats. So carry on, I'm sorry, keep going. No, oh, you're all good. So we just selected a pre, a preset um, dosage essentially or instructions. So this page here, um, it's actually somewhat similar to what we actually have in the system today, as far as filling out additional information for prescribing. But um, anyway, you'll notice all of the specific fields at this point. Um, as we make our way down, you have your directions. And keep in mind the directions pulled from that pre-configured thing that we just selected from the last page. So we have that. And then we have our pharmacy down below here. So we can go ahead and put in the patient's pharmacy at this point. Um, and you can use my zip code if you don't have one. You what's, can put in my zip uh, code what's in your area? There we go. We will go to the arena district. Okay. All right. So you'll notice that'll then auto insert the pharmacy. And then if you have any additional information that you need to add at this point, you can do so. Do you have anything else to add, Tiffany? If you hit send right there, we can look at the options to either send as a support user. So here's where you have your queue for the provider. So if I am, if I have like delegated authority to build prescriptions for you, if she were to hit queue for a provider, I think Victoria, you can show it on mine at least. Uh, if this, some of these you have to do vitals. Depends on what you prescribe for them. So maybe Zofran has some limits. So I see this a lot with some of the kind of um, non like standard things that people prescribe. Perfect. And so if you look at, did it, did it go ahead and send for you or to go to provider? I, I think uh, we sent it to the provider for approval. So in your little like red inbox right there, I think you're logged in as me. You should be able to see all the things that are queued up that need to be approved. And they're in ascending order. So they go from oldest, descending oldest to newest. Well, that may not approve always form. Approve, I don't know. Yeah. All right, can... so I just, I go clicked ahead. approve. Um, now we can go ahead and do approve and send. And that'll trigger to actually send to the pharmacy, right? Yeah. So you have, if you're the um, provider, you'll see like this little option to approve things that are queued for you, as well as like things in your little email inbox. And so that email inbox is also where you have notifications from the pharmacy saying, wait a minute, this didn't go through. Very soon you'll have that little inbox inside of your AR account. So that if you are the, if you're the pre prescriber, you can see in your inbox and your iPad that you've got a message, like a message from the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. So I think those are kind of the main key points from the screen, unless you can think of anything else you'd like to go over. I was thinking about going to the documents section next. Yeah, we can see it on your version. Then I'm, I'll just do a quick screening of the um, actual scripture network from desktop so you can see some of the options. Perfect. Um, let's see if this one. Okay, here we go. So you guys are all familiar or should be familiar with your documents section here. So if you click the three dots and choose documents, this is where every single document that your patient 
or that's really associated with your patient live. So consents, questionnaires, e-prescribe. So you will notice our little e-prescribe icon. So if I click on this, you'll have all of the patient's information, the pharmacy information, and then what we actually prescribe and who prescribed it. And you can always um, send this information as well. So if you click the little icon at the top, you can print it out if you, the patient needed to take it home with them, for example. Um, and then obviously you can always email it from here as well. All right. Perfect. And I'll go real quick here. Show you the scripture network. So give me one second here to get in. I apologize for the noise. My it's Texas. We don't have school today. It's kind of crazy around here. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Anastasia's page here just to get to get sent over to the, the network. So make sure you can see that. Okay, perfect. So a couple things just to know about this. So you see here for me. I don't know if you could, you probably couldn't see the queue in Victoria's, but I have messages here, which are all the things. I've got errors, new prescriptions, um, things that are approved, all that's in here. So as the pharmacy approves it, I get back a note that says approved. And then in my queue, I have prescriptions that are waiting for me to approve. So if you look at Karen here, this is the one that Victoria sent over to me. So it doesn't show up in Karen's account yet as done. Um, it may show up as like, on AR is like a document, but as far as like being all the way sent in until I approve for all patients, then it's not going to be sent over. So she sent these to me to approve. I'm going to approve all of them. I can approve all at once. Something Stop. Okay. I don't know. I have some weird air here, probably because I'm on this, this test user, but you'll see your queue here. You'll see your messages here. Reports as well. Um, if you wanted to do a, like a new prescription for Anastasia, it's a compounding prescription. You wanted to add like a new drug. If you go, you can create a compound. So you can do a custom compound, which allows you to basically begin everything. So you can set it up. You can start mixing and matching different tubes of things and amounts and grams and micrograms. So there's a whole function here to do your compounding. So if you have to prescribe topical that you like your certain way, you can send this to any, any compounding pharmacy that can take it. So that's one option there. And then you also have favorites. You can also do a filter. Um, so let me go back to Anastasia's homepage here. If I look at, I believe I have my favorites right here. So you've got, again, across the top here, some pretty commonly prescribed things. You've got your favorites. I don't think I have any. Actually, I guess I have these three. Um, and you can choose from those. So if you haven't done a certain way that you like it, like with a certain format, a certain amount, a certain amount of refills, that's a favorite you can just save. And then I also have to the left here, my allergies, my pharmacy information, diagnosis. This is a nice one too, if you wanna add diagnosis codes to your prescriptions. Um, I can look at, once I do, once I get the actual drug listed, so let me go ahead and do her Adderall. If I click on this, once you're in that, and you've um, selected something. Let me hop out of here. I'm so sorry. I'm like a drunk person over here running this thing. Usually, if I go, if I go to my Adderall, aha, here we go. Now I can see my. I should be able to see my drug database information. Um, normally, there's my allergy tracker right there. She has no allergies, no known allergies of any sort. So you kind of get some information over here. Things will flag for you. You can put your vitals in. You can put all your diagnosis codes in. It's all sort of here for you on the left hand side. And you can do encounters from here. You don't need to though, because your encounter is saved inside of AR. So you could certainly put it here. If you're using this like independently, but you shouldn't do that because you have your actual treatment chart, you know, record inside of AR. Um, but you've got lots of options in here to play around with. Um, if you look through this and you want to, you know, learn more about it, obviously we're going to give you again on a learn our, our AR learning lab, lots of documentation about what you can do inside of the SureScripts portal here, but then you'll have some videos as well. There's also a workflow document that you'll see in the learning lab very soon. It tells you how to, how to actually enroll in everything, how to get where you need to go. But it's really pretty simple. We'll never use these over here. Um, you can add a user here, but they're not going to be in your AR account. So you want to add all your users from AR because to add them here will not connect them back. So make sure that you add anyone you want to add that's going to have access inside of AR, not inside of this particular thing here. It actually may not even work for any of you because it's, it's an admin, right? And again, I'm going to test like a test sandbox. So 
You probably shouldn't even have this button, but just in case you do. All right, we have a Q&A over here. Let's see here. Where do allergies pull from an AR? So right now, these allergies are not pulling directly from AR, um, but stay tuned. Um, there's some new things coming on the medical history form that will make this easy for you, which will launch hopefully very soon. We're just waiting every day for it to launch. Um, so if you are, you know, if you are working with a, a patient who's already in the system somewhere, you can kind of, you know, chronicle your allergies here, which is where you'd want to see them right if you're prescribing in the actual prescription area. Um, in the immediate time, like right now, they are not in here connected directly. There will be a database search just like you see here in the AR account where you can search for, let's say, I don't know, um, coding allergy. So you can do all that inside of AR too. So that's coming very soon to connect them. But for now, in the next few weeks, you're going to need to check your allergies in the AR side and then put them in here, which as you guys know, you can do from your at call button. So if I'm in my chart and I do my at call, if the patient has any allergies, they show up here. She doesn't have any, but if she did, they would show up here. So you can at least get them into this note. So right before you go over to e-prescribe, you can think about, okay, she has an allergy to X, Y, Z, but they're not integrated today the way that you want them to be, I'm sure. So coming soon. What else have we forgotten, Victoria? Anything else we've forgotten? No, I don't think so. I think we hit everything. Well, we're hoping to get this out. We had a we've got to get this to the Apple App Store because again, it's an app, the app on your phone for AR has to be approved and rolled out. So we're looking at we think midweek this will be fully involved for all of you. Um, we'll send a note out as soon as it's live. But you can be thinking about right now as you kind of go through the next couple of days. Do I want to do monthly or six months? Do I want to do non EPCS or EPCS? We want to do this as a practice. This is you know a thing that we want to actually institute in our practice. So if you have any questions about that between now and then, feel free to reach out to us on our info at or even on our chat. It may require me or Victoria to answer the questions. We're the only ones who've been doing it for months and months and months. It so will get you an answer back. And then we'll also send out some links to um, if you need it, like the enrollment process that we have now in our learning lab. But beyond that, I think hopefully about Wednesday. You know, I'm not making any promises here. Oh, Wednesday, it's fully live, ready to go, and you can start using it. I think I saw one more question just come through. Let's see, where did that go? Oh, I found it here. So, yep. in the system. So, this system is where you'd have your refill request. Um, so, as you go into your short scripts here, let's see if we can get directly, let me do something in here. You'll get all of your refill requests through the scripture portal. So as I mentioned before, we're working to get your notifications directly into AR, which is another bill that has to come. So there's a whole notifications revamp coming where as you get two AE te two A text messages to you, pharmacy queue from another, you know, another support user, all that would come into your AR portal and you would see it on your app in a little inbox or on the desktop. That is not done yet. Um, so that's coming soon, very, you know, hopefully very soon. But this message here would be where you would get your refill request from the pharmacy. So it'd be in this portal. So if you have a support user, I recommend that maybe, you know, as we're in here each day to look and see the messages if there's refill requests. I know right now not convenient, but it's better than what we have right now, which is a paper form. So we'll take it. Mm -hmm. We sure Anything will. else that we have that we need to know? I don't think so. Um, we'll keep everybody posted, you know, once we're fully live with this. Um, so if you guys follow us on Instagram, we'll be sure to make an announcement and then we'll send out a newsletter as well, just notifying you all that it's fully live. So yeah. And if you need to get a hold of us, obviously you guys know what to do. Um, if you're part of our AR user group on Facebook, just know that you cannot get help there as customer support because of HIPAA, patient names, all that, we do not give out any of that information in our AR user group. That is strictly like a best practices, workflow, et cetera. So if you have issues about a feature, you need to delete it, add it back, customer issue, refund an invoice, whatever, you have to go through chat support because we do not monitor that with the same people who monitor the technical support that you need. So just make sure as you think about where do I put this request? If you want immediate help with a function or a customer issue or a patient issue, you have to go through our chat or our email. If you want like info and something else like that, and you just want, you know, hey, how do you guys do this one thing whenever you have this problem? 
That's a perfect example so I'm going to put inside the AR user group. So I just want to make sure if I DM you directly with a, with a response, it's because I don't want you to put patient information on our Facebook group. That's why we're not trying to hide from you. We just want to make sure that we don't put things that are risky out there for people to see. So if you need HIPAA related things, put it in a chat or an, an info at, and then we'll reach back out to you and make sure we have things in a protected format. So, all right, anything else, Victoria, that you can think of? I think that's everything. All right, guys, and we will see you hopefully with more fun new things next week. Yeah. All right, everyone, have a great one. We'll see you guys.